Welcome everyone to the fourth episode of my tutorials for Planet Coaster Console version. Today we are going to talk about building. Yeah, if you haven't seen the first uh, three episodes of the tutorials, we talked about landscaping, as you can see with this wonderful mountain over here. We talked about coaster building, which we did uh, with this little kitty coaster. We talked about pathing, and you can see some examples still in the back over here. And today we are talking about building. So what we're going to do today is we are going to build this area here of the queue. We are going to make like a little shelter that is going to be um, on top of this little queue area and I'm going to talk to you about the basic concept of building. Right, let's get started. So, first of all, what you want to do is to understand the basic concept of building. So for those of you who have played already on the computer, the building is a little bit different, at least from how it's organized in the game. So basically, first of all, you gotta go into create. This is the easiest way of doing it. Once you go into create, you just go all the way back you go back by pressing B button on your Xbox controller or the circle button on your PlayStation controller and you can go to all. And once you're in all, you have all the building materials, like every single thing um, in this browser over here. And you have to understand, Planet Coaster builds with a dual system. They have a system that is called the grid system and all pieces that are stuck to the grid is like um, having this little grid in the background of the piece. If there is a, uh, you know, just a normal piece over here that has nothing in the background, which is just a full flat white-ish background, that's a, let's say, 360 degree manipulatable piece. That's a free forming piece. Now, I'm going to show real quick what the difference is before we go actually to building the house. So, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go down here so you see the difference. I'm going to go quickly where we find find some grid pieces and some non-grid pieces. So you can see this castle arch support over here. If I press X now on my PlayStation controller or A on the Xbox controller, I'm going to select this and what happens now, and that's really important, you can see that there is a little bit of a white area highlighted. That is the grid. So at the moment you only see one square. As soon as I press X again, this is basically confirming that you want to put it down, you can see the squares kind of um, emerge. There are more of the squares appearing. So now now we have a grid of six tiles, as you can see. And if you now want to move this piece, you have set it once and you move your cursor and automatically branches out, you can see the further you uh, kind of build it out, you can see the grid just kind of moves with it. So you have the option also to make the grid bigger or smaller. It's automatically set to four meters in width and four meters in height. Talking of height, you can move pieces up and down by holding down the circle button on your PlayStation controller or the X key on or X, X button, I should say, on the Xbox controller. Now, then you use your left analog stick to move it up and then you can see it's snapping actually by these four meters. So each time I snap it up once, it's going to go four meters up in height. Same goes for up and down. Now, if you see to the right hand side over here, there's a little settings menu. And if you want to go into the settings menu, you use your arrow keys as always, you know, if you see in the previous tutorials, you know this by now. But if you go down, you can see the grid size is here. And if I do adjust this down, you can basically see how this kind of creates a way taller, smaller little grids over here. And you can also adjust the height. Cool thing about the height is you can go all the way down to 0.25 meters. Now, if I move the piece, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see it a bit better. You can see it snaps only to these little grid pieces over here. You can go in each direction. And that is something we are going to look at at the very end when we are talking about some general efficiency tips in building. If you want to rotate this piece, so let's say we wanna set this all the way here to the back of this piece, you use your dash buttons like R1, L1, or RB, and LB um, on your controller of the Xbox and then you can see you flick this piece basically around and then you can just move it right to the back of it. I'm going to press X again and this is how you do it. Now one thing you want to make sure as well, you can change the color of pieces. This works for several pieces, not for all but for several pieces and if we hit now down, as you can see the top right, there's this little um, icon showing you pressing down um, one of your analog keys and if you do so, it basically opens this menu. You're going to press down the left analog key, um, analog stick, and then this appears. You can see the little X appearing there, you just have to confirm again, and that opens the menu for colors. You got two options. You can use the previous uh, colors, which is down here. I haven't played today, so there's no previous color in here. But you can also go and tap once on the dash button, and that opens the um, color wheel, which is kind of cool. It's not actually not a color wheel, but it's uh, the same function. Um, you have the option to go in here for saturation and uh, um, brightness. And on the right hand side, you can actually um, slide down this uh, color color slider, so to say. You can you can choose a different color. I'm gonna go for this little bit of greenish tint here. And and then you basically just 
except by pressing down the X key or the A key and it's done. If you don't like it, you just press uh, the um, Y key on your Xbox controller or the triangle key on your PlayStation controller and it basically just resets the color. It's easy as you go. Pretty simple. If you want to go out of this menu, press B two times and you're out again. If you want to go all the way out of this menu, you just pre press B again and you're back in the pieces menu. Now, we talked a lot about the grid pieces now. What about free-forming pieces? Well, you can see next to it, there is a box over here, a cargo crate. And if we select the cargo crate, you can actually see that the cargo crate is also in the same building, as you can see to the top right, there's still building 12. We're going to talk about the building itself in a, in a little, but first of all, let's talk about this piece. You can see I can move it around as I want. There's nothing snapping to the grid, which is kind of nice, which is really, really nice. You can still rotate the piece by hitting the dash buttons, like one, two, and it's just gonna rotate by 90 degrees. However, in here, you can use again your wonderful dial radial menu, and this is holding down triangle or the wonderful Y key on your Xbox controller. This opens this menu, and as you can see over here, you have multiple options now to go into advanced move, advanced rotate, or move snap. Move snap is something we're going to talk about at the very end. This is a new thing that the computer version does not feature and I'm very pissed because it's the best feature ever. Um, this is a little teaser here. Stick with me because that's the pro feature now. Um, it's incredible but we first of all have to understand the basics of building. Now what does this advanced menu do? I'm going to show you. We open the advanced move first and then as you can see there are three arrows appearing with three different colors. You've got red, you've got blue and you've got green. These colors will always stay the same. Red is for the x-axis, y is for the uh, green is for the y-axis and blue is for the z-axis. So if you're familiar with 3D building or 3D modeling you do know this by heart and I don't need to uh, explain anymore but for those of you who don't know this allows you to move the piece completely free in the environment but in a precise way. As you can see I'm moving this now completely free. If I switch the um, axis over here you can see now I'm moving it up and down and it stays only to this axis. And if I'm moving it to the right and left, I want to use the blue one. If I hold down the menu again and you go to advanced rotate, you see the same thing happens, but you just get these circles. And the one you're using is always highlighted. So now we have the red one. And if I rotate, you can see, look at that. It just completely rotates the entire piece, completely 360 degrees. There is no limit to your creativity given. Use the dash buttons to switch between the different areas. And then there you go, place it down and the piece is just floating in the air, just like that. You have no limitations, so you can place this wherever you want. And that is pretty, pretty, pretty important. Now, what happens if you don't want to do this? You have, uh, you know, accidentally pressed this down. You don't want to have this rotation. You want to do it again. Well, you can just hold down the square button on the PlayStation key or the X button on your Xbox controller, hold it down and then press on the arrow keys to the left. And this is actually undo. And undo is a feature you really want to embrace. This is the feature you need to use. So let me just undo twice and you can see the whole building is gone. I say, okay, well, damn, I didn't want to do this. I want my building back. Well, hold down square again and just press in the other, in the opposite direction, just to the right, and you redo your action. It's kind of cool because it lets you do some mistakes. It lets you, it allows you to do some testing, right? You can do some testing without actually running the danger of doing something wrong and you can't really change it. So this is a feature which becomes a little bit more familiar in games now, but it hasn't been in for a decade. And it's really something so useful in a building game like that. If you just accidentally press something down, you didn't want to just, you know, learn this by heart, just, you know, head down, just undo your, your action, redo, undo, Pretty simple, it's the most important thing ever. All right, now let's go all the way out of all the buildings, okay? We are now back in the normal menu. There's nothing going on, you can see there's only multi-select for me available right now. Now we are out of the building, okay? So what happens now if I do wanna put down a piece? Let's just open create again, and we're just gonna take a, a tree. So let's, let's say we have this tree, you know? Just wanna place this tree now next to, let's say we wanna place this tree down here, all right? So you can see this tree is now floating. You just hold down again square, just move it down pretty easily, you know, and then you can also rotate it as we go. Pretty simple, and then you just place it. As you can see, there is no building or whatever opening at the moment. This was just like placing down the tree in the game. Nothing happened. If we go back to these pillars over here, you can see when I move over, there's a little inner circle appearing. And if I click on this by pressing X on your PlayStation controller or A on your Xbox controller, you can see 
there is a building opening to the top right hand uh, corner. There is an object now. Okay, so let me just quickly explain to you what a building means. A building is a group of pieces grouped together by one grid piece or by any selection of pieces. Why is this useful? Well, it's pretty useful because you can move this thing at once. You see these two pillars now? You want to move them at once? Well, you just do not go into the building. You actually stay in here in the overlay and you choose the advanced move. And what it does, it lets you manipulate the movement or the, um, the positioning of this entire group of pieces. And I'm going to show you why this is actually really, really useful. Now you've seen I put down the tree over there, right? So what happens if we place down a few more objects? Let's just put down a bit more of nature over here, shall we? Let's just go to a smaller birch tree. We just put a sink that next to it, just down below in the ground here a little bit as if it was a bush, you know, just doing the same over here, like with another one. Okay, like that. Just gonna, you know, just pull it up a little bit, rotate it a little bit, just like that, putting this down. And then let's see what else is in here, what we can use. Yeah, let's just use these, some flowers in front of it, you know, just next to the, next to the path over here. So um, that's pretty pretty much what we want to do. By the way, one little um, hint over here. If you do not want to put that up and down manually the whole time and you just want to freaking snap it to the ground because you're lazy as I am sometimes, you just go to the menu here to the right hand side, move all the way down and then you can see some options over here. They are called align to surface, stick to surface or snap to position. What you want to have is align to surface. Let's press on and you can see that this flower piece over here, wait, oops, I just uh, unfortunately deselected that, always aligns to the ground as you can see. It just moves with you. There is no problem about this. You can just, you know, always like just go here and press it down wherever you want. It's kind of a bit finicky when you come to other pieces like that. You can still move it down if you want and then press it. But then if you, if you just un, un, unleash it again, um, it's going to make this again. So just always uh, press it back on and it's pretty easy. You can also do this, um, I guess, no, you can't do it over here. I thought the radial menu has it, but it's, it's not in here. So it's easy if you just want to align some pieces over there. So now we have done that, you know, you can see there's this bit of nature. But now if you want to manipulate one of these things, and you can see there's this little point appearing as well, you just select this one tree or this one tree down here, or one flower. But let's say you want to move all of this. What happens is you can't, you just need to move it all by once. And this is where the building and grouping system comes into play. What you want to do, move somewhere else where you don't have anything selected, hold down your radial menu by pressing Y on your Xbox controller or triangle on your PlayStation controller, go to multi-select. And what happens now, you get the selection tool. What you want to do, go over all these pieces and just press A. And you can see this is nice. This is all the way nice. What you do then, you confirm your selection. See, we have eight pieces selected right now. Good, let's confirm that. Boom, there you go. And now you have a mixed selection as it's called. What you can do now is you can save it as a blueprint, which is one way to do it, or you can group the scenery together. Now what it does, and just kind of did this real quick, I'm gonna go all the way out. Now what we've created is a group, and a group is something different than a building. If I hit this now, you can see it's called Scenery Group 1. If you want, you could also rename this now to Flower Arrangement 1 or whatever. Now, the cool bit about this is now, as we choose that and we hit down our radial menu again, you can basically duplicate this thing and then you have the same arrangement of trees again. And you could, if you want, just place that anywhere you want next to it to so just create a bit more of a, of a nice area, you know, just rotate this a little here just into the other direction maybe oh you know what I just want to I just want to have it like this you know just following the same line and let's have a look that we can just move oops uh, a little bit closer so there you go and just a little bit further up because the flowers shall be seen there you go confirm and we've done this you know we've we've put both in it looks kind of nice because um, yeah the trees are not the same height and this is how you can manipulate this to a group groups are always very handy as you can see and this is the building over here the problem about the building is it is tucked to the grid and now that means you can only move this building over here alongside the grid which is easy because you can't rotate it in any direction because it always has the grid in the background. While these things, which are scenery groups, they are not tucked to the grid. That means you could, technically, you can also 
um, move this thing in any direction if you want. So we can also make these trees now stand a little bit in the wind, so to say, you know, as if it was a little bit more windy here and we have this like tilt, that's possible. This is not possible with a building group. So easy to distinguish, a scenery group is manipulatable in any kind of axis and arrangement and, and direction in the game, while a scenery group is always only two dimensional on the two lower axis, which goes to Y and uh, X, I guess these are the axes you have. Right, so this was the theory, so to say. Now let's do the build over here. We want to build this little shelter and we are going to use very easily because I'm going to show you now the first efficiency technique you want to have in building in this game. Now what you want to do to make things easy for you, you always want to leverage the best things and therefore I'm going to pause the game real quick because the coaster is going to be um, quite loud at times and the movement might also be a bit annoying. So first things is you want to have an idea of where you want to put this. So this is going to be over the back part of our queue. So we want to cover, let's say, this this whole area here. So we're moving above now, okay? So this seems to be like, for me, if I look at it now, this seems to be like a six tile arrangement. So we wanna build six tiles. What I do now, I'm gonna go to create, and this time I don't wanna go into the full menu. I'm gonna go all the way down here to the left building, because I wanna start my stuff off with a foundation wall. And I like to use me some, uh, what, what kind of walls did I use here? It's concrete, so let's use, you know, Let's use also the way we did last time. We're gonna use some concrete. Oh no, you know what? We're gonna use the lime plaster wall over here. Yeah, that's fine. That does also fit in this area. So first things first, we have to align this pretty neatly with our path over here. So this is what I'm doing. I'm going to do first. I'm going to make sure it's almost the same angle as my path. That looks fine. And I'm gonna move this a little bit up just to make sure I'm, I'm kind of safe that it's lining up perfectly fine. Yes, it is. So this is where I wanna do it. And now I'm gonna move this all the way to the back so it aligns also with the edge over here. So this is where I'm gonna put this down. And now I'm just going to control if it fits also if I do this. Yes, it perfectly fits. Awesome, look at that. This is, this is easy enough. Okay, so I'm not going to build the full I'm not going to build the full foundation yet. I'm just gonna test if it all works and it seems to be fine. Just a little bit of height difference here so we can move it a little bit further up later on, but that's fine. Okay, so as I've done this first thing here, this is going to be my blueprint because I'm going to leverage the grid for my advantage. What I want to do, I want to build this full facade of this side here first and then I'm just going to copy it around. All right, so what we want to do first, we are going to go to the columns because we're going to use some columns in here to make it look some nice. And I want to use um, this iron column here. I think the iron column could work pretty neatly indeed. Um, so what I'm going to do with the, oops, what I'm going to do with the iron column, first of all, I want to have this thing snap to it, to the surface, because I want to make sure that this is in the right alignment. So. The best thing to use this for is always to find the right angle you want to have it snap to because as soon as you have the, um, the aligned to surface, the piece does align to the same axis as the wall is. And now I'm going to go back in my radial menu and I use the advanced rotate piece. As you can see over here now, it really aligns perfectly with the 90 degree angle on this build. And I want to tilt this thing or rotate my uh, columni now by 90 degrees because I want to have it in the same direction as the fence. I'm gonna go now to angle snap because I don't want to mess up with manually placing it. So what I'm doing is I'm just going to, you know, rotate it until I'm happy with the positioning. So there you go. This is fine. This is where I want to have my pillar standing in terms of, you know, the, just the general um, rotation. Now what I'm going to quickly do, I move back to advanced move and I'm moving it right here to the side. I want to make sure that this is the, the connection between pieces. And I'm going to move it all the way down. So it's just having a good height. You can always check with the people. Yeah, we can even go a little bit further down. Noise. So this is where I want to have this. Okay, fine. So this is that piece. And now I'm going to build basically from over here. So I'm just going to use some nice pieces over here. I'm going to go into all building pieces just to give, give me a bit of a better overview. And from now on, it's basically just up to your creativity what you do. You can use all the pieces available to you if you want. Um, I'm going to do some wood now. And to make it easier, you can press your triangle or Y key to enable some filters. You go into filters and then you can go and search for some building material. As I said, I just want to make sure that we want to have... Uh, let's uncheck them all. I want to go and have some wood. So what I'm going to do is wood plank, wood modern, 
uh, wood tile, it's all fine for me, and wood batten is also fine. So you can see, then you also get the choice of wooden pieces. It's only wooden pieces in here now. You don't need to worry about if you find wood or not. It's kind of helpful if um, you look for something very specific. You can always go in here and have that. And I'm going to use the wooden pillar. I want to go for four meters, you know, and I'm going to go with this one, wooden pillar, four meter plane. So you can see it's aligning very nicely over here again. So I'm just going to go into the auto rotate. This time I wanna rotate it in a way that it fits nicely to this wall. So there you go. And then I'm switching back into the advanced move. I'm gonna do it a little bit faster now, guys. So you should have understand the uh, understood the basic now. So I'm gonna do it all the way here. Um, I think I wanna have like two of them, you know, just making one up here and a lower one just align here to the railing and then also just connect to the foundation just to make it look a bit more nice. Right, I'll dig that. And now we can just basically check for some more pieces. I think I wanna have like a plank over here as well, you know, just aligning nicely. I guess that's fine. Go into advanced move, I'm just moving it up a little. And then um, I like this piece quite a lot. So let's just move that a little bit further to the back. This is where we wanna have our roof later and just, you know, move it a bit more up. Here you go. And now the question is, do we want to have like a flat roof or do we want to have like a like a tilted roof? And I think it would be nice over here to go, yeah, maybe with a slightly, slightly tilted roof. We got to look into that right now. Um, so you go and basically you can see if we want to have like a wooden roof, it's going to be in here. See, there are some wooden roofs and, you know, let's just select one of these wooden roofs. I'm going to go for like a, a tilted one. There's like a wood tile, one meter slope is fine, I guess. So let's go in here. This time, remember you're on the grid by now and you just wanna make sure the grid all the, like for whatever I do, I always use the smallest available grid. It's it's for me always the easiest to, to go for. And I'm gonna use this exactly this way. Yeah, it can stick over a little bit. Why not? That looks fine to me. I'm just gonna place it here. And now I did a little mistake, as you can see. Um, I did this intentionally because now I want to show you guys a very nice trick indeed. So you can see I have a problem now because this little, um, plank I put in here before is right in here and it's quite finicky to select that one. As you can see, whenever I press, I kind of select the wrong piece. Now it works over here because I found this little edge, but let's say you place that perfectly in here, like like so, and you always check this, you always uh, select the, the roof, you know? There's one pretty simple technique to always get the piece you want. So what you do, basically delete this piece. It's gone. Now it's way more easy to select the plank. You select the plank, but before you manipulate now, hold down square and undo your last option. This brings back the roof and you still have selected the piece which was underground or underneath this piece what was in your way. So always delete the piece that's in your way, select the piece that you wanted, undo your last action, while you're having selected the piece you wanted to select and then you can go back into the advanced move and basically just you know zoom in a little to be a bit more precise and then just boom there you go we moved it down and that's it looks kind of nice doesn't it looks already pretty decent now this is just the basic blueprint of the building we wanted to do. The only thing I just want to quickly do is, I think I want to have like a little pillar that goes into the middle to have a bit more of a steady, steady look and feel. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to select now this uh, lower piece here. There you go. And now I want to use this piece. I want to copy this piece from over here and use this again. Now there's a pretty simple technique and you can now hold down again your triangle or your uh, Y key brings up the radial menu again. And what you do, you go now to duplicate at advanced move. You can also duplicate and move, but that means it brings back the piece to your cursor and you have to manually place it. If you go here, it will happen like this that you have the piece, but it stays in the exact same position and that helps you to build over from here. It, it's like, I would recommend to always go with that. What we wanna do now, we wanna rotate this on the blue axis just to bring it into exactly the angle that we wanna have it, perfect. And now I'm gonna, I'm gonna move it uh, somewhat to the middle. I could have done this a little bit more nice, but whatever, it's just for the sake of the tutorial, we can just do it like that. Let's have a look that it's not really sticking out too much. It can stick out a little bit to the front. Oh, you know what? No, it can't because I want to make it connect in the middle. There you go. Place it here all the way done. Lovely. So what I do now, it's pretty simple. I, um, I just look at it if everything, you know, this is what I'm always doing. I'm just looking from all angles if that's fine. For me, that's perfectly fine. So what we do now, we go back into the building. We say edit the building. And before we do anything, just move 
away from the building so that your cursor has no little icon in the middle of the circle. Just press down your radial menu, go to multi-select, and then you basically just select all of it. Okay, you select all of it. And now magic happens. Confirm the selection with your right dash button. And now hold down your radial menu and we go into duplicate. And what this does, it brings back the same piece you built and you can just copy it around and easily build your building over here. Look at how easy that works. We can now just completely go easy on the build over here. It is that simple. Look, look, just look at that. Just look at how simple we build this little area here. I mean, isn't that beautiful? This is just incredibly easy to do. And now you already built this. You can just, you know, just kind of make this work for everything what you did. You see, we messed up a little bit with the roofs, to be honest. And then there's the first thing happening over here. There are a few things happening, to be honest. I'm just, uh, I'm just going to show you this in a bit. So first things first. You can see that the roofs are messed up a little bit. We're gonna fix this. But you can also see that we have the issue now that these wooden bars run through the people. So what you wanna do now, just take this piece, say move, and you move it all the way out. And then you just get rid of the pieces you don't need. So what you don't need over here is to just basically press B once. So you go in and delete this one. We're going to delete this one. And we're going to select this piece as well. And we're going to move this a little bit because it was too high eventually. So what we're going to do, we move it once down. So here you go. And then this piece is basically created to your liking again. And so just multi-select it. There you go. Have everything selected. Confirm. And then, um, whoops. No, no, we want to move it. Give me the move. There you go. And then you move it back exactly into the position where you wanted it. There you go. And from over here, same thing's happening. You just copy it over two times. There you go. Building is built. Now we do have a bit of an issue here because I didn't pay too much attention on the grid. And you can see this is a little bit um, off because uh, we didn't um, pay attention to the right axis, which uh, was my mistake. So you need to fill in something in the edges, but that's, that's simple enough. Um, you can just move the whole building um, by just going out, going out of the building. And what we do over here, we just now use the advanced move and we just go to the right area. And then what we do, we move it out a little bit so it's fitting a little bit nicer on the build awesome and then we go back to edit and now in order to make these corners better we just delete these pieces that are in the corners because basically we can do that better we can do it much better so you can see this is this is not how it should look but now you can see the framework from uh, below it's looking kind of nice it's looking pretty good now what you want to do over here you just go back into the create menu and then you can see there are some wooden roof tiles that we can use a little bit better so this is the corner piece and we're going to bring that to the same height as the other pieces just making sure it's really the same height because i don't know if it is let's just change change all of the excess things i think it's not quite this is the height we need to go for all right so over here what you want to do is just find the right spot here you go build and then yeah we have a little bit of an issue here so we might drag it all once more in both directions simply because um otherwise this is going to look somewhat weird so i'm gonna just do this and i'm gonna select this piece and move this once more out because otherwise we wouldn't have been able to fit something in the middle i'm gonna move uh, this piece as well surface move it over here well we can just actually move it again there you go and then we do the same with this piece we just delete that because that's just annoying and now over here we're just going to you know duplicate that one just rotate bring it back into the position you want to have it in and then it also remembers what you are going to do so you can just easily you know select and place all the time so well that's that's easy enough you know just just place these things down as you go um, just put it in all these corners that you want it and if you're lazy like I am you can also hold down X and then you get the multi select and you can use the add selection tool I'm gonna select this and this just confirm and then what you do is duplicate. I have now the two edge pieces. Just rotate them and squeeze them back into the position you wanted to have them in. Lovely. And there you can go. And this is already pretty much what we wanted to do. I mean, it's not the best ever. This was just only for the purpose of the building. You can now also, you know, what we do, we just go now to the... Oops, that was my mistake. We go to the... Nope, that is again. The, I wanted to go flat roofs. And then we are going to select whatever. This, this wooden roof... And we're just going to bring this one all the way up as well. You know, just placing it somewhat in here to finish off this build. So 
come on do it one and the other one if you zoom in it's gonna make things a lot easier by the way you know there you go place this in easy enough and the build is done what you could easily do now is as well because you can see the ground is not touched again um you know there are multiple ways of fixing this issue now i quite like to do it always with nature so what i would do now just to show you how this works um i would go now back into create and i would say go all the way back uh that was maybe one step too far uh, go all the way to the left, select nature, select rocks, and then basically also clear all the filters uh, that you can do by pressing down this button, um, and then you're back in. And you can now select some pieces. I would always go in and then just, you know, just place some rocks down here, just, you know, until you are basically happy with where they are, you know. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna place a few down here now. So just that it is, it's just a little ground, whatever thingy. And then it connects. I'm just gonna go and use these darker ones as well. There we go. That's a nice big one. You know, move it up. As you go, pretty easy. You can you can just manipulate them in a way you want. I'm just gonna bring that in here, there. Just make it look somewhat okay. You know, I'm not going to say even good, but it's it's the way it is. You know, it's just like. Try to find your way of building, but now with all the tricks, I really hope that you have a better understanding now of how it works. So there are plenty ways to get to your target, but I think this was this was already pretty useful for those of you who had no idea how how the tutorial or how the how the you know tutorials that's kind of what I'm doing, but how the um, controls work in general. So this is this is just how it would look, you know. Um, and you have pretty easily done this, you know, just just build this wonderful shelter for the pe people over here um, There's no, you know, wizardry involved. It's just simple building and now I'm going to show you the last thing That was the one thing I was talking about so so much. Let's say you want to build a fence This is going to be nuts guys. I tell you this is the best option ever so we go back in here and uh, we do select ourselves now some some props down here. There are some fences. Okay, we're gonna grab ourselves now this fence okay and we're gonna bring this fence down right here next to also by the way angle snap should be off so we can do it a bit better and now we're going to put this fence down you know just so that we like it next to our wonderful pathway down here lovely okay so we are going to use even the wonderful rotation because we want to have it very precise all right so we want to have exactly into the position where it is there you go and um, now what you want to do, you want to move this thing exactly in the same increments to make it look like very nice, right? So it, it's gonna be quite hard if you do it by, by your, uh, let's say, eye judgment, you know? Let's just try to make it like that, all right? So, noise. This is how I did it, it's nearly perfect. But what if you really, really, really want to make that perfect. What is when you really want to have the exact same distance between all the pieces? What you could do, you could go and use the grid pieces, right? Use the grid pieces and do the grid pieces. The problem is the grid pieces only allow you to make that totally straight. But what if you, when you have the same distance on a curve? Well, there is something in this game now which allows you to do so. So let us just select this piece, right? And we're going to duplicate that from the orientation over here. And we're going to bring this all the way over to here. And now I'm going to show you some really cool magic in this game. This is, this again, this is the best feature. I know I'm a little bit of a fanboy of this feature. But, well, trust me. What you want to do now, you go and have this piece, right? We select this piece, and from over here, I'm gonna say I wanna duplicate an advanced move. This brings me into this menu, okay? So that's that's what we already know. I'm gonna go to advanced move. This is that menu, we already know that. Now what I would need to do now is to move it manually, or I'm going to use the move snap. That's brand new, and look at what happens now. Boom, this opens a brand new menu, and this is a piece connected or let's, uh, let's say a piece relative grid that always works with the relative axis of your piece and that is insane now what this means is you can see the increments and you can actually exactly see that this piece over here is exactly the length of four increments well meaning two meters because i put the snap distance two 
um, 0.5, we can even go to 0.25, which means it creates eight increments. But let's say we now want to have a distance of two meters exactly, right? From the center of, or from the pivot point of this piece. And now what happens if I move this to the light, uh, right or left, it just snaps exactly, exactly to this location. So it is really perfectly fitted into the next position. And now the beauty happens. You know, we want to slightly rotate this and we can do this. We're just going to auto rotate, just go here and now just rotate it ever so slightly, okay? Just this tiny bit of rotation, go back into the advanced move, now move it and now what you have to do is basically toggle this off, move it exactly so it connects nicely enough, confirm and then you do again the, um, basically you are still in the moving, you go back and snap it on you know, snap the move on, there you go, and then go back into the increments, push it over, just like that, and you still build this. And now this way, you can build the perfect fence with the perfect increment. Let's say you even want to have something in between. You don't want to go two meters, you want to go four meters. Well, that's no issue at all. We can just press that down here, so have it once, and now I'm gonna go and see, this is now having the perfect um, distance in between, the perfect increment. Now again, you can, you can just go to advanced rotate, it disables that for a second, just push that thing down here, and then we go back to advanced move it automatically has this snapped on and we can just snap it all over to the other side boom there you go you could now again manipulate that to your likings oops i just rotated in the wrong way whatever uh, it's just to show you then uh, toggle this off go into your axis put in the right step and this is just like it is this ridiculous guys this is helping you to make the perfect fence for the perfect situation in the perfect increments in this game and oh boy would i love to have this in the per, uh, planet cursor pc version because that's like this is like a uh, prop precision tool from city skylands it is the perfect thing and once you get the hang of it you can do some really cool stuff with it i made this work over here just to test this so these things over here, which are for the brake run, I haven't done them yet, but this is the exact same thing. It has the perfect increment. I just rotated those pieces. So the increment um, always stayed the same over here. So these, these, these are always in the exact same distance. And you know, if you would do this per hand, that's really kind of tricky. But anyhow, guys, this has been it for the building tutorial. It was quite long, I know. Um, but I really hope it helped you a lot and I tried to really make sure I go through it as slow as possible but yet as efficient as possible. So you learned a lot, hopefully. Um, let me know in the comments down below if there's anything else you want to learn about building itself. Tomorrow the last uh, tutorial will appear and this will be all about general tips and some nature. Um, this won't be as long but it will hopefully be as helpful for you. In case you always stumbled into this video and you haven't seen the previous three ones, there is one for terraforming, there is one for a coaster builder, there is one for path building and I also got a beginner's guide that is completely about the UI and stuff like that. So, I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video about the building and it makes you a better builder. Let me know in the comments down below if there's any more questions you have. In case you like the video, please leave me a subscribe. That helps me a lot to build this channel and you know reach more people that might need help and might wanna have some cool planet, coaster, planet zoo and whatever content. But other than that, guys, stay safe everyone, stay healthy and I'm gonna see you in the next one.